Dear Heavenly Father, thank you very much for today. Thank you very much for the uh, easier I, easier day that I had today, Lord. I thank you for the camaraderie I had with my brother and figuring out YouTube, Lord. And I thank you and thank you for your ideas in my in my mind about how we are going to collab together and to be able to just chit chat on and certain serious subjects of our minds, Lord, on YouTube, Lord, and I thank you for that, and I appreciate you, Lord, and I continue to pray for my, um, my mental healing, Lord, it's a struggle, Lord, and I definitely need your guidance and your hope and your love and your desire to, in that mess, Lord, I need to know and I need to have that continued faith that I do know that you have it all under control, Lord, and I just need to find ways to give it up to you, Lord. And, and I thank you so much for everything you've given me. Dear Lord, I want to pray for anyone who wants to also pray that um, that you, they know your answers are going to be answered, Lord, uh, in whatever situations they find themselves in, Lord, that... There is no struggle, no pain, no sorrow that's too great for you. Anything that they are struggling with, I know that you will shine through them and giving them the ability to know that you are there for them, Lord. And I pray for my knowledge as I want to get to know more about uh, certain topics of the world, Lord, and, and understand them and understand where my role as a Christian is in the the way the world is acting as of today, Lord. It's um, it's a struggle out there, Lord, and I want it, and I and I want and I need and I desire guidance through understanding what my role is in this mess, Lord. As always, I do know that you have it all under control, and it's just for me to realize that and pray about it every single day, Lord, when I get down and, down and out and, and, and wonder where life is going to be in the next moment, Lord. In your precious name, we pray, or I pray. <laughs> Amen. Well, everyone, my name is Mr. Positive. Uh, thank you for joining. If you are joining for the first time, Thank you very much for joining. Um, what you are going to be hearing is me reading a book uh, out of the Paul's, or <laughs> the author's name is Paul David Tripp, New Morning Mercies, a daily gospel devotional. And that's exactly what we read. We read what the daily devotional message is about. Uh, in the mind of Paul David Tripp, and I think that's an amazing, <clears throat> amazing thing. And then he also gives us a further study um, to read about that certain page, and we're going to go ahead and do that as well. So, um, again, if you found this chat or if you found this uh, channel, uh, take a listen and take a subscribe and hit the notification bell and if it is not for you but you know someone who would like to listen to things like this share it out give it out there let people know that I'm out there my goal is to reach a thousand subs a thousand subscribers um, and by the end of the month and four thousand watched hours probably within two to three months Lord. so uh, definitely uh, will need your help in sharing this good message that I hope is getting out there for you guys. But without further uh, delay, let's get going. June 24th. God is unwilling to be your means to what you call the good life. Your relationship with him must be your definition of the good life. We do tend to turn God into a delivery system when we get excited about what he can do for us and what he can give us, we fall into thinking of prayer, asking and asking God to sign the bottom of the, our self-composed, self-oriented, individualized wish list. You know what would we like God to give us that we can't give ourselves. 
We set our hearts on things that we think will make us happy. Perhaps it's the love of another person and our detailed picture of the marital bliss. Perhaps it's a certain level of influence or affluence and all the things that we could experience and enjoy as a result. Maybe it's a ministry success, uh, influence and acclaim. Maybe it's freedom free, uh, from sickness and or suffering. Perhaps it's just a good week or a nerve of free job interview or a nerve free job interview. Maybe it's a succulent steak, a good vacation or children who uh, who turn out all right. Now in a way none of those things is inherently evil but there's something wrong about the whole system. So many of our ideas of what the good life is don't actually give have God in them. We envision the good quite apart from the grace of his presence, promise, and provisions. It is the sub subtle belief that life somehow, uh, some way can be found outside him, that the world is capable of being our savior, and because we fall into believing that life can be found outside him, God isn't central to our dreams. He, he's not in our dreams. The only way to actually t uh, the only way t he actually touches many of our dreams is that we see him as the delivery mechanism of the good life that we dream of and ask him to produce. He is not life to us, he's the deliverer of life. He is not the end He is not the end that we hunger for, but he's the means to the end we crave. He's all spiritual world turned upside down. In our fantasies of the good life, we're all sovereign. We decide what is right, good, important, and valuable. We define what life is. We control the agenda and set uh, the time timetable. The menu of the good life is written by us. It has us at the center. It's God's it's God's employed by us to do our bidding, and if he does, we will thank him and proclaim his goodness. It is a self-centered, uh, rigorously, it is self-centered, religious, religiosity that bears little resemblance to the faith of the Bible, yet it is is so easy to set yourself up as sovereign. It's so tempting to think that you know what's best for you. It's so natural to shop horizontally for what you will only ever find vertically and to question what why God, fail, God failed to deliver. Psalms 103 says that God satisfies you with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle's. Verse 5, those good things come in person, and his name is Jesus. Yes, it is true. Jesus is the good life that you need, no matter what is on your wish list. For further study and encouragement, John 10, 1 through 18. So let's go ahead and do that. John 10, 1 through 18. Uh... Jesus the, uh, Jesus the true shepherd. Most assuredly, I say to you, he, he, who, it, he who does not enter the she, uh, sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way to same... Let me see what God's... I don't want to butcher God's word here. Some assu most assuredly, I say to you, he who, he who does not enter the sheepfold... By the door, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep bears his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them. And the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. 
yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this illustration, but they did not understand the things which he spoke to them. Jesus the Good Shepherd. Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thieves, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that I have come that they may have life and that they may have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But a hireling, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. A hireling flees because he is a hire hireling and does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep and I am known by my own. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep and I and other sheep I have which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring and they will hear my voice, and they will bear, and they will be one flock and one shepherd. Therefore, my Father loves me, because I lay down my life, that I may take it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This command I have received from my father and there ends today's message i thank you very much for following along um yet again i love the faithful watchers who comment on my um youtube um it's not the it's not the amount of people that comment it is the heart of the people that who that do whether it's one person or 20 i love the fact that there is always something to look forward to when I uh, wake up in the morning and look at comments. I thank you guys for joining and I thank you guys for listening. And as always, God is overabundance in love. So because of that, it gives me the ability and the righteous decision to know that I can love each and every single one of you um, regardless of who you are, whether you are a sinner or or a purposeful sinner, person who doesn't live, uh, who doesn't believe in you, God, or a person that does live in God. Thank you again, and till the next time, I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye, everyone.